Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. We head to Madison High School on this Saturday for an episode of Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden from 72 years ago today, June 3rd, 1951, and the subject, the first aid course. And we thank you for tuning in. On this Saturday, as I said, this is the 154th day of the year, and this is we have 211 days remaining till we get to 2024. President John Adams took up residence in Washington, D.C. on this date in 1800 in a tavern because the White House wasn't yet completed. I know of a few presidents who probably would prefer to live in a tavern than... Uh, In 1850, the traditional founding date of Kansas City, Missouri, the date on which it was first incorporated by Jackson City or Jackson County, Missouri, as the city of Kansas. The poem Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer, published on this date in 1888 in the San Francisco Examiner. The ROTC, established by Congress on this date in 1916. On that same date, the National Defense Act signed into law, increasing the size of the National Guard by 450,000 men. The Duke of Windsor married Wallace Simpson on this date in 1937. And in 1949, Dragnet premiered on NBC Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet. Now, the first episode did not use the traditional music. In fact, uh, a lot of the first episode of Dragnet was not what you would hear today or on later shows. That first program of Dragnet is apparently lost to the ages. 1965, the launch of Gemini 4, the first multi-day space mission by a NASA crew. Now, for the first time on this date in 1965, Edward H. White floated free outside the space vehicle Gemini 4 for the first time. Get back in. Okay. I don't know. We're coming over to the left. The left end. They want you to come back in now. Roger. We've been trying to talk to you for a while here. Go back in. Come on. Astronaut Edward H. White taking the first spacewalk on this date in 1965 by a U.S. astronaut. Government of China sent troops on this date in 1989 to force protesters out of Tiananmen Square after seven weeks of occupation. 2013, the trial of U.S. State U.S. Army Private Chelsea Manning for leaking classified material to WikiLeaks began. And in 2017... Eight people murdered, dozens of civilians wounded by Islamist terrorists driving a van in London. After the van crashed, its three occupants ran to the nearby borough market and began stabbing people in and around restaurants and pubs. Three of the attackers were shot dead by police. Passing away on this date in history, persons of note include novelist Franz Kafka, Pope John XXIII, pro wrestler Dory Funk, the elder of the uh, Funk family. Uh, Ozzie Nelson, the band leader, producer, director, actor. The uh, Iranian Shiite leader, uh, Ayatollah Rutola Khomeini. Also actor Robert Morley. TV personality, Dennis James. Okay, okay. Uh, actor Anthony Quinn. Actor David Carradine. Actress Rue McClanahan. Actor James Arness. The man who sang about the lonely boy and thanked you for being a friend, Andrew Gold. Uh, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, Dr. Death, as he was referred to. Also, uh, boxer Muhammad Ali and attorney F. Lee Bailey, all passing away on this date in history. 
The president of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis, born on this date. Also, actor Maurice Evans, tenor Jan Pierce, dancer Josephine Baker, actress Ellen Corby, Paulette Goddard, born on this date. Also, Leo Gorsi, Lily St. Cyr, also Colleen Dewhurst, Tony Curtis, Allen Ginsberg, Boots Randolph, Yakety Sax, uh, probably best remembered by my generation as the Benny Hill theme, uh, game show host Chuck Barris, who created a number of, of interesting game shows, uh, most of which probably the best remembered in the newlywed game, but also he did put his own spin uh, when he hosted uh, the show he built, The Gong Show. Chuck Barris, born on this date. Also, actor Edward Winter and musician Curtis Mayfield. Move on up. Uh, Eddie Holman, hey there, lonely girl, 77 years old today. Uh, She was Leather Tuscadero on Happy Days and had a big hit with her song Stumbling In. Susie Quattro is 73 today. Uh, Yes, she had a hit with the song Free and Let's Hear It for the Boy from Footloose. Denise Williams, 72 today. Singer-songwriter Dan Hill, 69 today. And uh, CNN's Anderson Cooper, 56. Those just a few of the people celebrating the third day of June as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Ah, yes, thank you, Mrs. Miller. We're going to go back 72 years to June 3rd, 1951, an episode of Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. That'll be coming up next here on this Saturday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thank you for tuning in right here on your favorite radio station. Before we get into uh, this episode of Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, I want to say a couple of words, if you don't mind. First of all, remind you that because we are now in June, it is summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime. And what that means is that a lot of shows went off the air in June, July, and August. And because of that, we're going to hear a lot of shows that you would not normally hear. Shows like Call the Police, uh, The Henry Morgan Show, and many more shows that uh, uh, were not traditionally broadcast. Uh, because uh, at, at you got to remember, in the 30s and the 40s and in the early 50s, uh, radio was not the portable medium that it would become in the late 50s and the early 60s. And people didn't really consider listening in cars. Uh, it was not considered something that was uh, done, according to some people. So, uh, a lot of the stars... 39 weeks, took the summers off, and uh, then they came back, and of course there were no reruns, because all of the shows that were transcribed at the time were primarily for uh, the the sponsors and such, and that's how we have a lot of the shows we do today, uh, sponsor recordings, but uh, because of that, you're going to hear a lot of different shows, and so uh, if you want Jack Benny, come back in September. Uh, Anyway. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say and make clear is uh, thank some people, and I've thanked them before, and I want to thank them again. I want to thank Robert. I want to thank Susie. I want to thank so many of you who have uh, uh, used the Buy Me a Coffee function on ClassicRadio.stream. Uh, Karen has bought, uh, bought us copies. Uh, so many of you who have done the buy, use the Buy Me a Coffee function. Oh, Richard. I can't forget Richard. Uh, Joseph Lowe. Uh, so many of you uh, who did that, who uh, used the buy me a coffee function, you support us more than you really understand. And uh, your help is uh, and your your support of this show is tremendously greatly appreciated. And I thank you so much. And you can do that at classic radio dot stream. That's at classic radio dot stream. So check it out. 
and I think you will find it. Uh, you'll feel good about supporting something that you hear on the radio. All righty. Now, um, of course, our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. This is one of the last shows of the season for them. This episode uh, from June 3rd, 1951. A wonderful ensemble comedy. Uh, I'll talk more about it if I have a moment or two here. 72 years ago, June 3rd, 1951, the first aid course. Well, for many of us, the early morning hours aren't the most cheerful time of the day. So it is with our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. Fortunately, however, by the time we've had our second cup of coffee, most of us feel a good deal better. How true that is. I always feel quite a bit better after my second cup of coffee, which I have at 7.30 in the evening. (laughs) But when some extremely fortunate occurrence is impending, I can even be cheerful at breakfast. That was the case last Friday when I joined my landlady in the dinette. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. My, you're in a good humor this morning, Polly. It's <laughs> grand to hear you singing like this. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. <laughs> and it's such a nice song, too. The beautiful blue Danube. <laughs> have always been my favorite. The Strausses, mine too. I wouldn't get my meat anyplace else. <laughs> this reminds me of the last time you were in such high spirits. I'll never forget that morning. You flitted around like a gay little bird. When was that, Mrs. Davis? The day you found out that Mr. Conklin had to stay in bed with the flu. <laughs> I've got even better news than that today. You mean Mr. Conklin's resigned? Please, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> Let's not wish for the moon. (laughs) But I did hear that Miss Enright is leaving school for the rest of the semester. She is? Yes, it seems her spinster sister is ill upstate. So Miss Enright's gotten a leave of absence and she's going up to nurse her. You mean Miss Enright's going to nurse her spinster sister for the rest of the semester? Yes. Oh, she'll nurse the spinster sister for the rest of the (laughs) semester and the way we'll go. Forgive me, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> I can't get that blue Danube out of my head. <laughs> well, I know Daisy Enright's always been a rival of yours, Connie, so I can't blame you for being happy about her going. This leaves you a clear field with Mr. Boynton, doesn't it? Exactly. Now there's nothing between Mr. Boynton and me except Mr. Boynton. <laughs> David, you don't seem so enthusiastic about the news. Frankly, I'm not. Miss Enright's been conducting the course in Red Cross First Aid I've been taking three nights a week. Well, cheer up, Mrs. Davis. Even if the course is discontinued, you can take it again next season. But I was hoping to get some practical experience, Connie. (laughs) Oh, that's Walter Denton to drive me to school. Be right with you, Walter. If you want first aid experience, Mrs. Davis, why don't you come out to the car and watch us take off? (laughs) Take off? Yes, the way Walter starts that jalopy. It's ten to one, I'll bang my head on the windshield. (laughs) Well, now that we're on our way, let's have a nice smooth ride to school, Walter. Okay, Miss Brooks. Say, I'm sorry you banged your head on the windshield when we started. Oh, forget it. It's only a flesh wound. Just try to control your tendency to speed, won't you? Yeah, I'll try. But it's awfully difficult on a beautiful day like today. I think I know how you feel, Walter. I'm rather elated, too. And I'll bet our joy stems from the same source. The imminent departure of one Daisy Enright. I couldn't be any happier if two Daisy Enrights were leaving. (laughs) I mean, Miss Enright's a very good teacher, Walter. Why should you be happy to see her go? Well, because my mother's been taking her first aid course. And everything she studies, she tries out on my father and me. Well, you shouldn't complain about that, Walter. Your mother's just trying to learn how to take better care of her family. Yeah, she sure took care of me last Monday. 
seems she had to do some splint practice, so naturally she used me. You seem a little flexible for a splint, Walter. <laughs> no, she put the splint on my leg, Miss Brooks. And then, then she told me to walk across the room. And did you? I took one step and fell on my face. <laughs> what did your mother do then? She bandaged my face. <laughs> But with six yards of sterile gauze. <laughs> Could have used more, but my dad had nine yards wrapped around him. Your house must have looked like an Arab settlement. Well, with Miss Enright leaving, they'll probably discontinue the class until next year anyhow. But surely you've had similar experiences to mine. Mrs. Davis takes the same course. Doesn't she practice on you? No, Walter. Luckily, I've been out a good deal of the time. Mrs. Davis does all her first aid practicing on our next-door neighbor. Oh, Mrs. Landfield? That's right. Limpy Landfield, we call her. <laughs> Hi, Miss Brooks. Didn't Walter drive you to school today? Yes, Harriet. He'll be along in a minute. Oh, you certainly look radiant this morning, Miss Brooks. What's the reason for the big smile? I just told you Walter drove me to school, Harriet. I always smile when I get out of his car alive. <laughs> Whatever the reason, I'm glad you're so cheerful, Miss Brooks. Thank you, Harriet. Oh, before I forget, Daddy wants to see you in his office immediately. Have you any idea what he wants to see me about? No, but he sounded even more urgent than usual. You better get right on in, Miss Brooks. Very well, Harriet. I'll see you in class. Good luck, Miss Brooks. Enter. Uh, you wanted to see me, Mr. Conklin? I could answer more truthfully if you rephrased the question. <laughs> There's something about which you must see me? That's better. <laughs> Sit down, please. Now, I don't know whether or not you're aware of it, but our school is about to suffer a grievous loss. Miss Enright is leaving. I know. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> Please try to control your sobs. Since her sister is ailing, I've granted Miss Enright a leave of absence effective at once. You see, there's no one else to take care of the poor creature. And so Miss Enright that... will have to nurse her spinster sister for the rest of the semester. Exactly, Miss Brooke. <laughs> Believe me, it is with deep regret that I'll bid farewell to Miss Enright. She embodies all those qualities I most esteem in a teacher. She's very capable, Mr. Conklin, and I'm sure that uh, she... She's would... more than capable, Miss Brooks. When Miss Enright goes... I can't help feeling that some part of our school is going with her. Well, we shouldn't begrudge her a few pencils and erasers. <laughs> I mean, she'll be back in the fall, Mr. Conklin. I sincerely hope so. Now then, since it is too late in the season to hire outside help, this vacancy must be filled by other members of our faculty assuming additional duties. I think I just heard the school bell, Mr. Conklin, so if you'll excuse me, uh, There I'll... was no bell, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Sit down. Although her classes will be taken over by Mr. Chalmers, Miss Enright leaves another most important post to be filled. Namely, the Red Cross first aid course she conducted three nights a week. There goes that bell again. <laughs> Be seated, Miss Brooks. In mentioning this post to you, I must remind you that in spite of the high honor that goes with the office, there is absolutely no financial recompense whatsoever. That bell is getting louder every minute. <laughs> Look, Mr. Conklin, it's been years since I got my certificate in first aid. Since and... the Red Cross, like Madison High itself, is run on a purely democratic basis, one may only serve it by exercising one's own free choice to serve. It's purely voluntary. But how do you know I'll volunteer, Mr. Conklin? Miss Brooks, <laughs> do you have a large bank account? I know, sir. And is teaching the only profession with which you are familiar? That's right, sir. And would you like to continue to make a living in this profession, Miss Brooks? <laughs> Certainly, sir. Well, well, then. I hereby exercise my own free, democratic, voluntary choice of saying yes. <laughs> Eva 
Arden will continue in just a moment, but first... I mentioned the wonderful ensemble cast of Our Miss Brooks. Of course, Gail Gordon, such a wonderful time. Uh, Jeff Chandler and uh, Dick Crenna, Richard Crenna, who had become a wonderful, serious actor after this run, and so many great people. Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden from uh, June 3rd, 1951 on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We'll have the news from 72 years ago today when Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox continues on your favorite radio station. Just going to take a minute here to tell you about the big savings going on now, the Claret Sale at MyPillow.com. And you know, I've talked about how in my office, I have a pair of My Slippers, and they're really comfortable, and they're on clearance right now. The MyPillow.com slippers, $25 a pair, limit 10, and I would buy three or four more pairs. Unfortunately, they're out of my size. They also have sheets, pillowcases, clothing items, all on special right now. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the clearance tab at the top of the page, use my promo code Wyatt, or call 1-800-928-4715. Limited sizes remaining in the MyPillow slippers, limited colors on other items. MyPillow.com, clearance tab, promo code Wyatt, one 800 Nine two eight four seven one five. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on a Saturday here on your favorite station. An episode of Our Miss Brooks starring E. Barton as it was broadcast Sunday, June 3rd, 1951. In the newspapers of that Sunday 72 years ago, these were some of the headlines. From London, Washington, and U.S. 8th Army headquarters in Korea came indications yesterday of possible new peace moves along the 38th parallel. Uh, The moves, if any, are made apparently will come from the U.N. side. Secretary of State Dean Acheson told the MacArthur Inquiry in Washington he knew of no present negotiations for peace in Korea, nor of any proposals having been made by the Red Chinese. Allied troops burned their way with flamethrowers through stubborn Chinese defenses in gains of one to three miles yesterday as the Korean War entered a new phase. Lieutenant General James A. Van Fleet reined in his 8th Army announcing that the mission now was to block aggression. But the momentum of this hot pursuit offensive carried the lines forward in central and eastern Korea. Red China hinted yesterday it intends to carry on the Korean War into next year. The Peiping Radio, in a broadcast heard in San Francisco by the Associated Press, called on the Chinese people to raise funds to buy heavy equipment for the Red Army in Korea, the so-called People's Volunteers. Quoting, a nationwide check on the campaign will be carried out in January of 1952, according to the broadcast. Senator Pat McCarran, the Democrat of Nevada, said last night he intends to ask Congress to grant a new $100 million loan to Spain. McCarran, who last year obtained congressional approval of a $62.5 million grant to the Spanish Spanish regime of Francisco Franco, told a reporter he plans to propose the new loans in the form of an amendment to some appropriations bill. Premier Mohamed Mosegi refused yesterday, despite a personal plea from President Truman, to enter any negotiations with a British government mission unless Iran's oil nationalization law is clearly recognized beforehand. The feverish premier left a sickbed and read to a secret session of the Senate the letter from President Truman, who expressed personal anxiety over the serious consequences of the present explosive situation in Iran's oil controversy. And Ferris Institute calling all co-eds. The college in Big Rapids, Michigan, is campaigning for women students to bolster enrollment that has dwindled because of the draft. Those some of the day's top news stories from the newspapers of Sunday, June 3rd, 1951, on your radio, are Miss Brooks, which continues following these messages on this Saturday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. 
Sunday's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, an episode of Gangbusters from 74 years ago, June 4th, 1949, The Case of the Date with Death. Two young people come together at a rainy football game, but the guy turns out to be a stick-up man and then kills a police officer. That's coming up on Sunday's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox anytime at classicradio.stream or check our podcast, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now the conclusion of our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden in the first aid course, 72 years ago, June 3rd, 1951. I had to take over Daisy Enright's first aid course didn't help my appetite any. Nevertheless, when lunchtime came, I went to the school cafeteria, baited a table with meatloaf, and sat down to wait for Mr. Boynton. But as I toyed with my salad, it was Miss Enright's voice that broke in on my reverie. Well, Miss Brooks, as I live and breathe. Two faults that are easily remedied. <laughs> What are you doing, darling? Feeding your full little face again? <laughs> what do you mean, again? I haven't had anything to eat since... What do you mean, full little face? <laughs> Just take it easy, darling. We've all got our troubles. Look. Look at what's happening with my poor sister, for instance. It's such a pathetic case. Picture, if you can, a poor, lonely spinster with hardly a friend in the world, practically no one to turn to. I sympathize with you, Miss Enright. Now tell me about your sister. <laughs> what a quaint sense of humor. Now, but there's something I want to discuss with you. Do you mind if I sit down here for a moment? Not at all. I can't digest this food anyway. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I understand that you've been requested to complete my first aid course. Or is the word volunteered? The word is railroaded. <laughs> What I can't figure out is why Mr. Conklin picked on me. Oh, you were a natural for the job, my dear. Otherwise, I would never have recommended you. You recommended me? Oh, dear. Now the cat is out of the bag, isn't it? I don't blame you for being self-conscious. <laughs> Mrs. Brooks, are you inferring... If the bag fits, get back in it. really going out in the blaze of infamy, aren't you? Going out? Oh, oh, but that's what I sat down to tell you, darling. I'm not going anyplace. My sister has decided to come down here and live with me. Isn't that a relief? It's such a relief, I may kill myself. <laughs> well, at least I won't have to conduct those classes of yours. Oh, but you will, darling. That's one of the provisions I made when I agreed to stay. I told Mr. Conklin that I'd have to spend all my free time with my sister, and he said that he didn't mind a bit, as long as you took over for me. As one English teacher to another, Miss Enright, I'd just like to say that I am the one who has been took over. <laughs> I just don't think it's fair for you Good to... Good afternoon, step... ladies. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no, not a thing, Mr. Boynton. Miss Brooks was speaking. <laughs> Down. Oh, thanks, Miss Enright. Oh, that food you've got looks very appetizing, Mr. Boynton. Oh, yes, I thought I'd take a whirl at the pot roast today. But I kept this plate of meatloaf covered for you, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I can probably handle them both. I'm starved. <laughs> oh, my, that roast looks yummy. <laughs> and so does the meatloaf. Would you care to try one or the other, Miss Enright? Why don't you try both, Miss Enright? You can feed one of your faces, and I'll feed the other. <laughs> Uh, I think Miss Brooks is a trifle missed because she's going to have to take over some of my duties. Oh, yes, I, I heard you were leaving, Miss Enright. When are you going? Surprise, surprise. I'm not going at all, Mr. Boynton. You're not? No. Well, well, that is a pleasant bit of news. Did you hear that, Miss Brooks? Miss Enright's staying on. She's not leaving at all. Isn't that just splendid? <laughs> Oh, eat your pot roast. <laughs> My dear sister is coming to live with me, Mr. Boynton. I'm going to take care of her. Oh, I see. Well, well that'll keep you pretty close to home most evenings, won't it? Oh, oh 
I don't know. One can't look after one's sister every night. Now can one? If one doesn't go out until one's asked, one can. <laughs> now, you really must excuse me. I've got several things to do. Oh, do you have to go so soon, Miss Brooks? I'm afraid I do, Mr. Boynton. Here's your check for the meatloaf. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Brooks. But uh, where, uh, <clears throat> well, where is, is your... Uh, I uh, paid my check, Mr. Boynton. Oh, well, uh, so long. <laughs> Darling, I'd like to remind you that I'm coming over to your house tonight to brush you up on the first aid course. It was Mr. Conklin's idea. What? As a matter of fact, he's coming along with me. But I didn't plan on... He said we'd be there at 8 sharp, Miss Brooks, so you'd better be ready at that time. You know, this first aid course is Mr. Conklin's pet project. Uh, Sort of like Mr. Boynton is to certain other members of the faculty. (laughs) If you know what I mean, dear Mr. Boynton. (laughs) Huh? I guess it's safe to leave him here for a few minutes. <laughs> well, if the Emperor has spoken, I guess I'll see you tonight, Miss Enright. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Oh, goodbye, Miss Brooks. Oh, uh, don't stop at the dessert counter, dear. From the back, those calories show like mad. <laughs> if I could plead manslaughter, I'd kill her. From all the unjust, tyrannical... I'll take it easy, Miss Brooks. <laughs> You know what talking to yourself is the first sign of, don't you? Yes, Walter, but I don't care. Oh, things can't be that terrible. Tell Uncle Walt what's the matter. It's pretty bad, Unc. (laughs) Miss Enright just told me that she and Mr. Conklin are coming over to my place tonight to brush me up on her first aid course. What's so bad about that? This is a chance to kill two of your favorite birds with one stone. If you're going to show them what you remember from your first date experience, you'll get a chance to not only clobber Miss Enright, but to show Mr. Conklin that you're totally unfit to take over the job. Well, Miss Brooks, what do you think of the scheme? Walter, if we were in France, I'd kiss you on both cheeks and give you the Legion of Honor. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Conklin, Miss Enright. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Just leave your coats and heads out here. A hat. Thank you, darling. Well, are you all prepared for your refresher course? I really don't think it'll be necessary, Miss Enright. You see, I've been rereading my manual, and you'd be surprised how quickly the things I'd learned came back to me. Well, I'm delighted to hear that, Miss Brooks. But if you're going to instruct others, I'd like to see some practical demonstration of this knowledge. Of course, sir. Just follow me into the living room, please. As you can see, I've moved most of the furniture into one corner of the room, and I've got the splints, bandages, and adhesive all ready. Excellent. Now then, let's get right to business. We will suppose that our subject has sustained a fractured elbow and a broken ankle. Let's make it two broken ankles. (laughs) Very well. Two broken ankles. Now then, lie down, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Then we can... Wait a minute. Why should I lie down? If someone had sustained two broken ankles and a fractured elbow, is it too unreasonable to assume she'd be lying down? (laughs) No, sir, but the wrong bones are being broken. That is, I want to show you what I know about first aid. Miss Enright's the one who must lie down. Oh, you want me to pretend I've been through an accident? Believe me, it's typecasting. (laughs) Just crumple, dear. The rug is spotless so far. <laughs> now, uh, let, let's get on with it. Do as she says, Miss Enright. Oh, very well. Now, we'll assume that Miss Enright has been in an automobile accident, and besides having both arms broken, she's in an acute state of shock. Shock? Well, how do I react? As if Mr. Boynton finally asked you for a date. <laughs> job is to kneel by her side and take care of the arm. This silk sleeve seems to be covering up the injury. Miss Brooks, this is a brand new dress. Please, what do you want to be, neat or cured? (laughs) Now, it's, it's obvious from the looks of this arm that it's badly injured. Where my fingers touch, it's all black and blue. See, Mr. Conklin? Where? Where is it black and blue? Right there. (laughs) Now, hand me that catsup bottle, please, Mr. Conklin. Well, here you are, but what's it for? 
realism. This was a pretty bad accident, remember? Oh, Brooks, you're ruining my dress. Quiet, you're in a state of shock. <laughs> now we'll start bandaging the arm. First, I put the splint gently against the skin. Oh! <laughs> then I start the roller bandage here. <clears throat> now I wrap the gauze with one arm this way. Yes, go on. Then I put the other arm through and tie the bandage this way. <laughs> now I reverse the process, again bringing the other arm through the bandage and wrapping it securely. Uh, now what? Now if someone will untie my arms, I'll continue. <laughs> uh, Miss Brooks. Can you or can you not tie a firm bandage? This splint was a bit too rough, Mr. Conklin, but if Miss Enright will let me use one of her legs... Now, see here, Miss Brooks. Uh, please, please cooperate, Miss Enright. Stand up and let's see if Miss Brooks can tie a firm bandage on your leg. Well, if you insist, Mr. Conklin, there. Now then, Mr. Conklin, if you'll just stand nearby and hand me a few things... Oh, very well, very well. Uh, first, please pass me the adhesive. Uh, here you are. Now, we'll take down your stocking, Miss Enright. There, and wrap this adhesive nice and tight. There. Oh, Miss Brooks, but you don't put adhesive next to the skin. First, the bandage must come. You're so right, darling. Off you come, adhesive. <laughs> now, now we take this bandage and... Oh, uh, hand me a splint, please, Mr. Conklin. Uh, here, here. The idea is to get a good, steady support for the leg. Around we go with the bandage, all around the splint. Another bandage, please, Mr. Conklin. Here's one. Now we wrap this around the other one. Now the adhesive, round and round and round. There. How does that feel? Solid? Very, Very solid. solid. Good grief, you've tied Miss Enright's leg to mine. <laughs> I thought one of those legs had more wool on it than the other. <laughs> Will you please get this bandage untied? I'll have to tear this splint out first. <laughs> Ouch! There's a big splinter right in my thumb. Good. Now, for your next test, let's suppose that somebody's got a big splinter right in his thumb. Oh, I'll get it. Mr. Boynton, come on in. Well, I just dropped by to return a book I borrowed from Mrs. Davis, but... Uh, oh, you've got company. Please join us, Mr. Boynton. All right. Oh, good evening, Mr. Conklin, Miss Enright. Say, what are you doing, having a three-legged race? <laughs> Don't be funny, Boynton. There has been an accident. What's that on Miss Enright's dress? Oh, no. How do you like that? A biology teacher who faints at the sight of catsup. I didn't faint, Miss Brooks. I, I just slipped on this scatter rug. Well, stop jabbering, everyone. I've got to get this splinter removed. Would you like me to probe, Mr. Conklin? Keep away from me, you angel of destruction! Let us see, Mr. Conklin. Daisy Enright's on the job. I'll get it out for you in just a jiffy. Now, here's a nice clean pin. Now, give Daisy your thumb. Come on, come to Daisy. Down, Daisy, down, girl. Here, here, Miss Enright. Now, please be careful. Oh, there's nothing to it, Mr. Conklin. There, it's out. Say, that didn't hurt a bit. That's remarkable, Miss Enright. You know, everyone should master first aid. I've been thinking of taking that course myself. You have? Yes. I'd like to sign up right now for the balance of the semester. It's a deal. Monday night at 8, I throw out the first bandage. Over my limp carcass, you do. <laughs> Miss Enright, I'll move heaven and earth if you'll take over your old course. Oh, well, that won't be necessary, Mr. Conklin. Now. She's halfway to heaven already. <laughs> well, 
Oh, well, Miss Enright, there's just one question I'd like to ask you. Yes, Miss Brooks? What sort of splint does one use after one cuts one's throat? <laughs> Conklin was so delighted at Miss Enright's decision to resume her first aid class that he insisted on treating her to an ice cream co- soda before taking her home. So they were out of the house before I could reach her jugular vein. <laughs> That's when I got out my Red Cross manual. If, uh, if you're so interested in first aid, Mr. Boynton, maybe we could practice a bit before your first lesson. Oh, I'd love to, Miss Brooks. Uh, here's an interesting problem. Huh? It deals with a back injury. For want of a better subject, let's just say I'm the injured party. Now, you place your left arm around my shoulders. Like this? (sighs) Yes. (laughs) Then your right arm goes around my waist. Like this? What does the book say we should do next? Never mind the book. Ad lib a little. Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Byrne, written by Al Lewis and Arthur Alsberg, with the music of Wilbur Hatt. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Croft. June 3rd, 1951, our Miss Brooks on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Visit our webpage, classicradio.stream, where you can stream our shows, learn about building a classic radio collection of your own, You can find our social media links. You can uh, also buy me a coffee if you're so inclined. Buy me a coffee money goes toward us buying additional classic radio collections and also uh, it maintains our distribution channel so we can keep coming to you here on your favorite radio station. Thanks for making us a part of your Saturday. Thank this station. Support the advertisers. Tell your friends the greatest radio shows of all time are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. <laughs>